Today's lesson is called The Benefits of Doing Yoga. Hello everyone, my name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Today we're going to be talking about yoga, which is yujia in Chinese.、Uh, they aren't very similar, so I thought I'd better tell you what it is in Chinese there, just to make sure you know. Yoga, of course, is associated with India. When I think of yoga, I think of、uh, people from India、uh, teaching this great practice to people all over the world. And of course,、uh, when、uh, people do yoga, or when I see them do yoga, I always hear the sound of sit. Tars and、uh, tablas in my head, but in this particular case, yoga is a form of exercise. I don't really do yoga myself. I've studied Tai Chi Chan before, but I have several friends who do yoga, and it does sound interesting. Now, I don't know much about yoga either, but I do know that yoga is very popular these days. Very often, people go to special places where they practice yoga. A yogi teaches them how to exercise, doing the, these yoga exercises. And for the most part, when you see someone doing yoga, it looks like they're doing very fancy and elaborate stretches with their body.、And、that's why very often yogis and yoga practitioners too. They're very flexible because they're always stretching their bodies, doing very specific types of moves. As far as yogi or yoga, I should say, is concerned, though I don't think they're called moves in yoga. I think they're called. Positions. Okay, you try to contort your body into a certain position and stretch yourself and make yourself healthier in the process. I think that's how it works. Anyways, let's go ahead and get some clarity by starting to read our article. We'll begin to do so right after this. The benefits of doing yoga. You might think of yoga as just a way for people to twist their bodies into odd shapes, but there's more to it than that. Yoga can improve your overall well-being by engaging your mind, body, and spirit simultaneously. Originating in ancient India, yoga is practiced today all over the world. 大家好，第一部分我们看到的单字是 overall。这个字是形容词，指总的、整体的或全面的。举例来说 ，Overall, the plan is good, but there are some problems with the details. 总体来说，那个计划很棒，但细节有些问题。又或者说 ，the last-minute campaign ads did not affect the overall outcome of the election. 最后关头的选战广告并未影响选举全面的结果。接着我们看到 well-being， 课文中为名词，有康乐、安康之意。例如 ，the nurse is responsible for looking after the well-being of the patients. 照顾病患的安康是护士的责任。也可以说 ，This past week, Trevor lost both his job and his girlfriend, so we're all quite concerned about his emotional well-being. 过去这一周 ，Trevor 双双失去工作和女友，所以我们都很担心他的情绪。再来，我们看到副词 simultaneously， 指同时的、同步的。像是 A few students in the classroom called out the answer to the teacher's question simultaneously. 教室里几个学生同时大声地喊出老师提出的问题的答案，而 simultaneously 去掉字尾的 ly， 则可以成为它的形容词 simultaneous。所以可以说 Anna was anxious about having two simultaneous exams scheduled on the same date. Anna 觉得很焦虑，因为她有两个不同的考试被安排在同一天。接下来我们看到一个单字 originate， 这个字是动词，指起源，来自。例如 ，the river by our cabin originates from up in the mountains. 我们小屋旁的那条河源头来自那山上。而 originate 去除字尾的 a t e， 则可以成为它的名词 origin。我们可以说 ，the origin of the painting could not be determined. 这幅画的出处无法确定。Okay, so we're talking about the benefits of doing yoga. Why doing yoga could be good for you, 
and you might think of yoga as just a way for people to twist their bodies into odd shapes, but there's more to it than that. So yes, you might think this if you see people、uh, doing yoga, maybe in your local park or on TV. You might be thinking, well, they just want to kind of stretch their bodies into odd shapes,、uh, maybe because they want to become gymnasts or something like that. But、uh, there's more to it than doing just those things. There's more to it than that. There's more involved with yoga than just twisting your bodies into impossible positions. There's a lot of other things we can mention when we talk about yoga. There you go. There's more to yoga than just twisting your body into odd shapes. There's more to it than that. Get this: yoga can improve your overall well-being by engaging your mind. Body and spirit simultaneously, and yes, if something is occurring simultaneously, it's happening. Or all of these things, I should say, they're happening at the same time. So you might think, ah,、oh, yoga, that's boring. People are just stretching all the time. What's the point of that? Isn't stretching something you do before the real exercise begins? Like runners will stretch before they go on a ten-mile run or something like that. Well. No, there's more to yoga than just simple stretching and twisting your body into weird shapes and stuff like that. No, no, no. Yoga can do tons for you. It can improve your overall well-being by engaging your mind, your body, your spirit. All together at the same time, simultaneously. That's kind of why we're using the word "overall," which kind of means general, involving all sorts of different aspects.、Uh, your overall well-being,、uh, whether you're、uh, happy and healthy, that's what your well-being is all about. So yes, it、uh, engages your mind and your body and your spirit. So it can make you、uh, religiously fulfilled, I suppose. If you're living a very stressful life from、uh, your job or something, or your family, maybe yoga can uh, help uh, you uh, cope with that, to deal with that. So, of course, your mind gets involved in this. You need to be thinking when you do yoga, and of course, your body is involved with all the muscles and the stretching and stuff, and also your spirit.、Uh, that's more of a religious aspect here, and these things are all happening. At the same time, simultaneously. That's an adverb, which means many things are happening at the same time. Now, originating in ancient India, yoga is practiced today all over the world. I think we all pretty much know that yoga comes from India, so that's the verb to originate, which means to come from. Uh, the printing press, for example, or paper, I should say, originated in China. You can think of various other inventions that came from various countries in the world. In this particular case, yoga originated in India, or it has its origin in India from a long time ago. That's where it came from, and yes, it originated in. Ancient India, i.e., people were doing yoga in India a very, very long time ago. It's an ancient practice. It's an ancient art. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. On the most basic level, yoga is a form of exercise that combines stretching and strength training, both of which can help you avoid injuries. Certain poses, like the cobra, work your whole body by strengthening your arm, leg, and core muscles while lengthening your spine. Of course, when you first begin to do yoga, you might not be able to touch your toes, let alone do difficult postures. With consistent practice, however, your body will become more flexible, and the poses will get easier to do. Second part, we see a word. Core， 这个字是名词，课文中指身体的核心肌肉。我们可以说 ，exercising the core muscles is important to improving overall strength。训练核心肌肉对整体的力量来说是很重要的。而 core 除了以上的意思，还有核心、关键之意。举例来说 ，Sammy felt that her change of diet was core in her losing weight。Sammy 觉得饮食的改变是自己体重减轻的关键。最后，我们看到名词 posture 用来指姿势或姿态。例如 ，the bad posture you sit will affect your vertebral column。你不好的坐姿会对脊椎造成影响。另外 ，posture 除了当名词使用外，还可以当动词使用，指装腔作势。
所以可以说 Jean tried to act like she's fully prepared, but it was all just posturing. Jean 试图表现出准备充足的样子，不过这一切都只是装腔作势。Okay, let's take a look at the second part of today's lesson. On the most basic level, you could also say at the most basic level. Both prepositions are acceptable. Yoga is a form of exercise that combines stretching and strength training, both of which can help you avoid injuries. So it combines these things together. It kind of mixes them together to create a larger whole. So you've got stretching, of course. And as Jeff mentioned, sometimes before you exercise, before you go swimming, or before you go jogging, you might want to stretch your muscles, or you might want to stretch them afterwards as well. So stretching is important,、uh, you know, kind of loosening up your muscles, but also you're improving your strength training, which is kind of what weightlifting does. If you lift weights, you get stronger. That's what strength is. The、uh, degree to which you are strong. So yes, it combines these things. You can stretch and you can become strong at the same time. Both of which, which means we're referring back to what we just mentioned here. Both of these things can help you avoid injuries. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. If you're trying to play basketball, if you're on a team, you don't want to get injured. There you go. And very often, that's why people do stretch before they engage in exercise. Okay, if you stretch, you will avoid. Injuries, okay, or it's less likely that you will become injured if you stretch. So here, yoga, yes, there's a lot of stretching involved, and that's going to help you avoid injuries. But on top of that, if you do yoga, your muscles will become stronger as well, and this also helps you to avoid injuries. Now, here's something funny though: go to a yoga studio, and I guarantee you that you will not find a bunch of weights. Okay, you're not going to find a weight bench. There's not going to be any dumbbells. Bells or anything like that, because usually when people think about strength training, they think about going to a gym and pumping iron, lifting big weights, and becoming like Arnold Schwarzenegger and stuff like that. Well, that's not the case. Apparently, if you do yoga, you can make your muscles stronger, and you won't have to lift any weights as well. Yes, apparently, yoga it combines both stretching and strength training as well. How cool! Now there's more. It says certain poses or certain positions that you reach while doing yoga. Certain poses, like the cobra, work your whole body by strengthening your arm, leg, and core muscles while lengthening. Your spine. Now here we've got the word strengthen. Okay, to strengthen something is to make that thing stronger. If you do go to the gym and lift weights, you will strengthen your muscles. You'll become stronger. You'll be able to lift heavy things and do more work and stuff like that. Further, we're talking about muscles. Core muscles are muscles that are in the middle of your body, like your abs, your abdominals, and the muscles around that general area. Right, so of course, if you want to do cycling, if you want to ride a bicycle, you need to strengthen your legs. And we've got different poses in yoga, like the cobra, which I believe is the yanjingse in Chinese. And of course,、uh, I guess because this pose looks like a cobra, that's why it's called that. And it will strengthen your body in various places. Those core muscles, which are the muscles down there by your belly, of course, when you first begin to do yoga, you might not be able to touch your toes, let alone do difficult postures. So,、uh, in this sentence, of course, we're talking about stretching, and the most common form of stretching is to kind of bend over and. Try to touch your toes. I can do that fairly easily. Some people can actually go all the way down to the ground and put the palms of their hands on the floor in front of them. That's being very flexible. I cannot do that myself, but. Some people may not be able to touch their toes, like like me. I can't even touch my knees. Really? Seriously? I, yeah, you're I've kidding. Ne- I've, how's that I possible? I have never, I've never been able to touch my toes, and sometimes, yeah, reaching down and touching my knees is hard for me. So yeah, maybe I should do yoga. Maybe I should take up yoga because yes, this sentence it looks like it's written with me in mind. It says when you first begin to do yoga. You might not be able to touch your toes, which is me. 
let alone do difficult postures like the cobra. Remember the cobra, this pose, it strengthens your whole body. It works your whole body. So I won't be able to do this difficult pose, okay? I won't be able to do this difficult posture because yeah, at this point, I can't even touch my toes. How can you expect me to do the cobra at this point? Anyways, this phrase, let alone, makes all of this clear. This phrase is used to make it clear that something is much less likely than what came before it, okay? So I can't touch my toes, let alone do the cobra. Yeah, the cobra is that much more difficult than touching my toes. So how could you ever expect me to be able to do the cobra if I can't touch my toes? Right, so again, let alone involves two things and you always say the more difficult thing afterwards. For example, I can't hold a gun, let alone shoot it. So I've never taken target practice before, so I can't even hold a gun, let alone shoot it. And here, of course, it would be easier to touch your toes than it would be to do difficult postures. Now, posture here, of course, is similar to pose, and it's just kind of basically another word, but a posture, of course, course, is a position of the body. We also use the word posture to talk about whether you have a straight body or not. Tobei, as you say in Chinese, that means you have bad posture. Uh, I have bad posture myself. Uh, I always kind of uh, slump over uh, when I sit down or when I ride a scooter or something. I always have to remind myself to sit up straight because I have bad posture. But here the word posture is referring to those different positions or those different poses in yoga. And we'll talk about some of these poses, positions positions, postures during the second part of our lesson. We'll be talking about that next time. Anyways, let's go ahead and wrap up this particular paragraph. The next sentence says, with consistent practice, however, your body will become more flexible and the poses will get easier to do. So you can't touch your toes now, but go ahead and give yourself some time practice consistently and soon you'll become more flexible. Now, consistently is the adverb. Consistent is the adjective, okay? And if you are consistent, let's say, you are steady. Yes, something that is consistent is steady and it kind of unchanges over time. So consistent practice, that means you practice regularly over time and you don't change this, you keep Add it further. If you're flexible, that means you can bend and stretch a great deal. A person who's very flexible can touch their toes. A person who's very flexible can do yoga poses. Teacher Jeff is not flexible. He can barely touch his knees. And flexible not only applies to the body, but uh, to other things like your schedule. My schedule is very flexible, so I can uh, take different jobs at different times. Okay, that brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson. Let's now listen. To the third part, and we'll be right back to discuss it. The mind plays just as critical a role in yoga as the body. When you pay attention to your breath while practicing, you also reach a more peaceful state of mind. This, in turn, can improve your mood and memory. Even if you practice yoga just an hour a week, you'll feel the difference it makes to your body and mind. For many, it's this feeling that makes them go back for more. Okay, there's more to yoga than just stretching. Remember that, okay? We talked about this. Yoga engages your mind, your body, and your spirit all at the same time. So let's stop talking about the body for now and let's start talking about the mind. Yes, the mind plays just as critical a role in yoga as the body. There you have it. Okay, by the way, we do have this word critical to talk about. And in this particular situation, we're not criticizing anyone and pointing out their faults or anything like that. No, no, no. Here the word critical means vitally important crucial, okay? If something is critical, it's necessary. You can't do without this thing. Like good customer service is critical to the success of your company. If you don't have good service, then your company is going to fail. So yes, the mind is just as important. It plays just as critical or crucial a role in yoga as the body. So the body's important and the mind is important as well. When you pay attention to your breath while practicing, you also reach a more peaceful state of mind. I've heard of that. You need to focus on your breathing when you practice 
practice yoga, and by doing that, you can reach a very peaceful state of mind, and it will help you function. It will probably lower your blood pressure and help you live longer. There you go, and this in turn can improve your mood. And memory. How about that? It almost sounds like when you're doing yoga, you are meditating. How about that? Yes, this in turn can improve your mood and memory. And here we have this phrase "in turn" to talk about. Yes, this phrase is used to say that one thing comes from another thing or is a result of another thing. But let's be specific. Specifically, we use this phrase when we're saying that one thing follows from another thing, or or these things come in succession. One thing after another. So, if you're doing yoga and you focus on your breathing and you're meditating there, okay, that's going to reach. That's going to help you, I should say, reach a peaceful state of mind. And this, in turn, or this comes after, this in turn can improve your mood and your memory. Anyways, even if you practice yoga just an hour a week, you'll feel the difference it makes to your body and mind. So if you take up yoga, you'll see results very quickly. How about that? How about that? Ideally, of course, it would be nice to be able to do yoga every day. But even if you only have an hour to practice yoga, that's enough to make a difference in your life, in your body and mind. And for many people, it's this feeling that makes them go back for more. So hey, yeah, study. Yoga, you'll get hooked, you'll get addicted, and it will change your life forever. And this is a great thing. So we're going to continue talking about it next time. Please join us then. Right now, we're going to listen again to our Chinese teacher. Good 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。你们上过瑜伽课吗？没上过人可能会觉得那是一种把身体折来折去、扭成奇怪形状的运动。我有上过一期课程哦，但我还是觉得它是个折来折去、扭来扭去的运动。应该是因为我没有坚持下去吧。好，课文第二部分最后一句他就说啦 ：With consistent practice, however, your body will become more flexible, and the poses will get easier to do. 然而，透过持续不断的练习，你的身体会变得更柔软，那些动作做起来也会更加容易。好，这边要介绍的句型是 with 名词，逗号，主词加动词。好 ，with 在这个句型里面，它表示有了什么什么，由于什么什么。with 加名词就可以表达出某个条件或是原因，例如 with practice。You'll become a better musician. 有了练习，你会成为更优秀的音乐家。那么 with practice 就是用来表达有了练习的这个条件成立，你就会成为更优秀的音乐家了。好，接着读到课文第三部分的第一句 ：The mind plays just as critical a role in yoga as the body. 就瑜伽来说，心智。就和身体一样，扮演着非常重要的角色。好，那这边要介绍两个文法重点。第一个是 play a role， 从字面上来看是饰演一个角色。我们可以用 play a role in 加上戏剧作品来表达在什么当中饰演一角。不过呢，它也可以用来表达对什么什么有影响，在什么什么当中占有分量。那它的用法是 play a role。in 加上名词或动名词，那其中这个 role 你也可以用 part 来替换。那我们常常会在 role 或是 part 的前面加上形容词，像是 important 重要的 ，major 主要的 ，key 关键的 ，crucial 决定性的、重要的等等。例如 ，the internet plays an important part in our everyday lives。网络在我们日常生活中呢扮演重要的角色。好，课文里面呢，我们再看到第二个文法重点是 as critical a role 什么什么 as the body， 意思就是如同身体一样重要的角色。那它用到的句型是 as 形容词搭配 a 或是 an， 再加名词，再加上 as 什么什么，来表示如同什么什么一样。那这是一个原级的比较句型。要特别注意哦，句型里面它的字词顺序是形容词。a 名词或者是形容词 an 名词，例如 ，Sam is as successful a businessman as his brother is. Sam 像他哥哥一样是一位成功的商人。那我这个例句是用到 successful a businessman， 而不是 a successful businessman。这个形容词是在名词的前方哦。
。好，那么由于句尾的动词 is 跟前面的 is 是一样的，我们就可以省略不用了。那我就只要说 Sam is as successful a businessman as his brother， 这样就可以了。好，那我们回头来看课文句子，他说 The mind plays just as critical a role in yoga. As the body, 本来这个 as the body 后面应该要有动词 place， 只是前后动词一样。那我们为了避免重复，你就可以把 place 改用助动词 does 来表达，变成 as the body does。那这个助动词其实也可以省略不用，就变成 as the body 就可以了。好，以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Overall. It's amazing what a good night of sleep can do for your overall peace of mind. Originate. According to one scientific theory, modern humans originated in Africa. Strengthen. The meeting will strengthen ties between countries and give leaders a chance to discuss new defense agreements. Consistent. I'm happy to tell you that Daniel's performance in school has been very consistent. Flexible. Researchers in Japan have created a soft, flexible material that is five times stronger than steel. Critical. Providing good customer service is a critical part of running a successful business. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See, See you next, next time. time.